In this episode of Viral Rewind, we're looking at a Windows 9X virus instead of a Win32 virus, and this one is called Spaces. Now, I've got a Packard Bell Pentium machine here, and it's got a 2 gigabyte old Mac store hard drive that has read errors and kind of on its way out. And there's a reason why I'm using the Spaces virus, because you'll see in its payload precisely why I'm using it on a worn out failing hard drive. So, there's a couple of different variants of Spaces here. You have Spaces 1245, 1445, two versions there, and the 1633. And you can tell from the icons, this is one that's infected Microsoft Paint. 1445 here, it's infected Microsoft Explorer. This looks like the internet connection setup, and then this looks like some kind of MS-DOS executable that's been taken over, calling it 1633. The one we're going to look at in particular is this one, Spaces 1245. So we look at its properties, it's 5.71 kilobytes. And you know, when we open Spaces, it looks just like Microsoft Paint. Functions just like Microsoft Paint. And yeah, you get the idea. So we ran Spaces and now what Spaces has done is it has loaded up into Windows memory masquerading as a VXD driver. So this gives it high level operations in the whole Windows operating system. So now that we've loaded it into memory, any programs we run from here on out is going to become infected with spaces. Now let me take a look at calc. So we notice this is 59.2 kilobytes. Run calc. Calc loads up just fine. And we're not going to see much of a size change. However, Spaces does write itself to the end of any program that it infects. So there will be a slight size increase. So any programs we run from here, they're all going to get subsequently infected with Spaces. So anyway, that's pretty much how spaces infects the system it again takes over a program then it loads up into memory and then subsequently infects other programs as you open them now let's talk about the payload payload occurs whenever the date is June 1st of any year we set this to June 1st now if we attempt to run any program from here on now you can't see it, but the, the uh, computer technically blue screened here because the mouse cursor went away and I don't have any control on the computer anymore. The computer is completely froze up. Now, what's going to happen is when I restart the computer, you're going to see the effects of what Spaces did. So let me see if I can use control Alt delete here. Nope, control out delete is not going to work. I'm going to have to hard reset. So when this system attempts to boot here, you are going to see the effects of Spaces. Because Spaces is a very evil virus with what it does to the hard disk of the infected system. And technically, that's why it locked up and there was a blue screen, because it was actually writing to the disk there, at the BIOS level. And as you see, this is as far as we're getting in the boot process. Windows isn't loading. It's not telling me that there's a non-system disk or disk error or some kind of I.O. error. It's just stuck there at a flashing cursor, which we kind of call the black screen of death when we talk about MS-DOS stuff that doesn't work right. Basically, what happened there with the payload when we tried to run calculator that was infected with spaces is it wrote, it, well, actually, it rewrote the partition table of the hard disk. So there's only one active partition on it now, 
and in that partition is stored the master boot record. Now, of course, the master boot record is loading the partition table. However, the partition table from that one partition, as I just said, contains the master boot record. So guess what? That is now reloading the master boot record, which is reloading the partition table. You see where this is going? Master boot record, partition table. Master boot record, partition table. Master boot record, partition table. It's stuck in an infinite loop of loading the master boot record and then loading the partition table. So the computer never sees the end of the partition table. So it gets stuck in this infinite loop. And although technically your data is still there on the hard disk, there's absolutely no way to access it. You basically have lost your data because again, you're stuck in this infinite loop of loading the master boot record partition table over and over. And you might be thinking, okay, what if we try using something like an MS-DOS boot disk or something like that to try to recover it? Well, let's find out. I'll put it in here. Press the reset button. And let's just see if using an MS-DOS boot disk will get us anywhere. You might be thinking already that what the outcome will be, and you are probably right. So here's the system going back into the boot process. Reading from the floppy disk. And it's not going any further than that. So as you can see, I tried to load a Windows 95 MS-DOS boot disk. You heard the drive operating. And now we're back at the same point as we were before with this flashing cursor. So Spaces is a very evil virus because not only does it make your data ir irretrievable with this setup it's got with the master boot record and partition table, but most MS-DOS disks and other recovery methods and potentially will not work because they need to be able to read the partition table and master boot record just fine. But they can't do that in this case because it's getting stuck in a loop. Now, this is technically where I would end the video and you can certainly end it here, but there is one other thing I want to try. Supposedly you can recover from the spaces virus, although you will still lose your data, if you have certain partitioning software or something that has an isolated version of DOS that doesn't try to load up the partition table or boot record from the hard disk. So I have something called Partition Commander and it's made by the same people that make System Commander that you might have seen which is that little graphical bootloader on some of my older virus videos. So I'm going to try that and see if Partition Commander can make sense of the hard disk and potentially restore it. And if that doesn't work, well then that's pretty much as far as this video gets and I've got myself here a Mac Store hard disk paperweight. Although in the future I may still find another way to recover, but let's see what Partition Commander can do here. So far, Partition Commander seems to be loading off the disk okay. Let's see what the graphical interface has to say. If it gets into it. Hmm. Yeah, we got an error. The partition table has values that exceed the size of the hard disk. No actions can be performed on this partition. 
cause. This might be caused by a virus. Hmm. You don't say. Or incorrect BIOS parameter settings in the BIOS, changing the BIOS LBA mode on or off, or the installation of a Unix that does not follow the hard disk standards. Well, and this is all a solution, blah, 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 so. Let's see if we can get a representation of exactly what it did to the disk here. Manual partitioning. Hmm. Well, we don't see anything. But it did say something was wrong with the partition table. Let's go ahead and create a new partition. It's values it, da 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 da. Ah. So it seems we actually cannot do anything. Tools. Delete. Let's see. Settings. Well, it looks to me like so far that even Partition Commander, although we can get into the interface and see our drive capacity, we cannot do anything here. So it looks like for the moment I have a big Mac store paperweight. So for that, I pretty much will say this is the end of the video for the Win9x Spaces virus. Again, a particularly evil virus.